everybody, welcome back to part four of the Tamiya 148 scale F35 build. Last time I got the airframe put together and uh, overall coated in the Tamiya mix called out in the instructions for the airframe. And this time I'm going to be tackling the RAM panels on my particular version, one of the early versions of the F35. Uh, Tamiya do provide a full set of decals for all those RAM panels uh, in the kit but I'm not convinced about how good they will be so what I've done this week is mask the aircraft off that took about two to three days I probably spent about 12 hours masking the airframe off uh, and painting the RAM panels so I'm just going to briefly uh, show you how that worked and what the result is and then we're going to move on later on in the video to do a little bit more masking and introduce some of the other colours that uh, Tamiya call out in the instructions and trying to match also the paintwork to the Tamiya decals that I'm replacing. Then in the second part of this episode I'll be applying the decals and for those I'll be using some uh, aftermarket decals uh, for the stencils and the national markings. We'll talk about those at the end of the video but uh, I'll just skip back a few days uh, to the beginning of the week and I'll show you how I masked up and painted those ramp panels. Okay so make a start this week and first of all I just want to talk a little bit about the colours that I'm using on the airframe. Uh, in the last episode I painted the whole of the airframe in this mix from Tamiya uh, and I'm using Tamiya's mixes in this build rather than any off-the-shelf F35 colours. So this first one is the main airframe colour, which is the what I call the LP15 mix. It's one of the IGN greys, mixed with a little bit of NATO brown. So that's already been applied. Then I've got what I call the LP14 mix. It's another lighter shade of IJN grey uh, in a slightly... Uh, smaller ratio of brown to it than the previous one uh, and that's done just to uh, highlight one or two panels things like the trailing and leading edges of the uh, flying surfaces finally we've got this color which is uh, the for the ram panels now tamiya provides the ram coating panels as uh, decals but i would don't want to use those so i'm going to paint all these and this is my own mix from the uh, LP14 a little bit of brown and some dark sea grey all Tamiya colours uh, I can't give you the proportions because I gradually arrived at it and what I've done is I've used this scrap of uh, wing to test all the colours that I've mixed. So this darker one here is the LP15 mix, the main airframe colour. This on the right hand side is the LP14 for the leading and trailing edges. And this is the RAM colour mix, this one. And what I've done here is just cut out one of the Tamiya decals and applied it to the main airframe colour. And I've matched the mix to the decal or as near as possible to the decal. So what this paint will do is replicate using the Tamiya decals without the risk of uh, the silvering and them showing up too much on the airframe. The other thing that I've done here, as you can see, is I've used one of the Caracal decals just to make sure that they're gonna show up against the mixes that I've used, which it does quite clearly. So that was worth doing. This is just one of the spare decals that I'm not going to be using for my version. There are lots in the Caracal set. So with those colours uh, mixed up and ready to go, we know they're going to work on the airframe. The next thing to do is to mask the ramp panels up. So uh, that's what I've been doing here. Uh, I've not shown this on video. It's taken about three days to do this masking. Uh, which obviously would be a bit pointless filming for the video. So what I've done, the way I've done it is to just cut out tiny little scraps of Tamiya yellow masking tape and just work around the airframe really using different shapes. 
I did try to actually uh, burnish some tape down into the shapes and cut them out, but that didn't work. So I've gone with the slightly longer and admittedly more tedious method uh, of cutting out these individual shapes and gradually patching the uh, mask together. That's uh, also done on the underside. This won't be all the masking that I've got to do uh, because uh, in some areas it's easier to do the reverse method of masking. In other words, to paint the LP15 mix, the base colour, over the paler RAM colour. Uh, for example, on the undercarriage doors and the Bombay doors, it's easier to do the outline, to mask the outline off and then reinstate the main airframe colour. And we'll come to that, we'll do a little bit of that later on. So with that, I can apply my RAM mix now. Uh, we can take the masking off and see what it looks like. So I'll go away, get the uh, airframe over to the spray booth and get that done.
nearly there. It's taken nearly as long to take the masking tape off as it did to put it on. And there are one or two areas where I'm going to have to come back in with the base colour. Because the pattern's so complicated, it's easy to miss some tiny little areas which I've done. So I'll just have to uh, touch those up with the LP15 mix. But uh, generally, that's come out pretty well. I've just been thinking really about how long it would have taken to apply the Tamiya decals rather than doing all this masking work. And I'm not sure that it would have been that much less really. It took nearly three days to do the masking. So probably 12 hours or so. But I think it would take probably a similar amount of time to apply all the decals. And at least for me, I couldn't have got the same sort of result as this using the tummy decals. So the easy solution, of course, is to use one of the schemes without the panel work on it. So just the first two or three schemes in the Tamiya kit require these round panels to be painted or applied with the decals. So you could avoid all this work by selecting one of those other options. I just think this sort of uh, panel work just adds a bit more interest to the model really, rather than just an overall grey colour. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. As I said, I've got to do those touch-ups. And then there's another colour to go on, which is just on the tail mainly. Just one or two areas, and I'll just use the plain LP15 for that. So in this situation I'm reversing the masking. I've already painted the uh, armament bay door, this is, in the ram colour overall. And I'm just masking off the border so that I can paint the 
main part of the door in the fuselage colour, the LP15 mix. I'm just doing it this way around because it's easier to mask the outside rather than the internal shape. Okay, so that's all masked up, ready for the LP14 mix, the main fuselage colour. Then uh, we'll come back, get the masking off and see how it looks. Okay, so that's come out all right. It's obviously a, quite a painstaking method to do all that masking on these doors. There are four of these armament bay doors. A couple of the undercarriage bay doors have similar treatment. Uh, but if you look at the decal sheet, these are the decals that you're meant to put on that border. These very thin strips here. So you can see how difficult they would be to get to lie down right on the edge of the door. And I'm pretty sure that took maybe 10 minutes to mask off and paint. I think it would take longer than 10 minutes to apply uh, the three or four decals that are required just for that one door. And I think if you're going to do this scheme with the different coloured uh, RAM panels on it. Uh, I think you've just got to commit to it really and know that you're going to have to spend an awful lot of time uh, either with the decals or as I've done here, painting it uh, to get a reasonable result. Uh, and as I said earlier on in the video, what you could do is just avoid a lot of this work, not all of it, but a lot of it by opting for one of the later schemes uh, with a more uniform grey colour on it. So here I've just outlined uh, another couple of panels that Tommy call out in a different colour grey and I've matched this again to the Tommy decals and I'm just using uh, pure IGN grey so no browns or any other colours in it and that gives a good match for this uh, colour on the decal sheet. So this is actually XF87, one of the new Tamiya acrylics. So this pure paint on its own has got a bit of a blue tinge to it. It's not that much different to the RAM colour, but it's enough for it to show up. It might be difficult to pick that up actually on camera. The camera tends to level the colours out a little bit, but uh, the contrast is there. I'm not absolutely certain, but I'm guessing that these panels that I've just painted in the bluish grey colour are uh, some sort of heat shield for the uh, exhaust. Okay so I'm going to leave it there for this first part of the two-part episode and uh, when we come back next time for the second part 
I will have uh, added a coat of gloss varnish to this. I'm going to use some Tamiya X22 just to give it an overall coat of gloss varnish ready for the decals. And uh, the sheet I'm going to be using is this one. So it's uh, Caracal 48140 for the Meng uh, 148 scale F35. Uh, but the decals that I'm going to be using, so the stencils and the national markings, uh, they'll fit on any kit really. So I'm not bothered about um, the worries about any fit issues with them. They're printed by Cartograph, so they should go on really nicely, particularly important with stencils. You don't want uh, the stencils to be silvering. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, I've tested these for colour against uh, the paint mixes that I've used on the model. So I'll get uh, all that done in the next three or four days, I should think. Uh, and I'll finish off this uh, fourth part of the series with 4B uh, sometime midweek next week, I should think. So until then, everybody, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Happy masking if you're building this kit and you're going to paint the ram yourself. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.